Hello students, how are you? I hope you are all fine and doing well preparation for your upcoming exams. So today I'm going to solve another question paper from May June 2023. So directly proceeding towards the question number one. See in this question Examiner is asking about and giving some information about the melting points like magnesium, sulfur, phosphorus, sodium chloride and sulfur. Have a look on this. But as you know, my style without wasting or without utilizing your time on just reading the description, first of all, have a look on the direct question demand. Then go back and try to read the instructions so the exact question says that state the type of bonding present in magnesium and sodium chloride so you can easily see without reading the question we can answer this question as per our previous knowledge and we can easily we can easily say that the bonding in magnesium is what metallic bond the bonding in magnesium is metallic bond so let me write here so that you can easily see so it's what metallic bond whereas in sodium chloride we can say it is ionic bond or even you can just write ionic or ionic bonding is that clear next question he says that explain the difference in the melting point of magnesium and sorry magnesium and sodium chloride as again we don't need to go back just have a look on the values the value sodium chloride has 1074 which is fairly higher than magnesium which is 923 so how we can justify this by just commenting that the ionic bonds are stronger due to strong or the giant ionic structure so what I'm going to write here due to giant ionic structure ionic bonds are sodium chloride or sorry sodium chloride has higher melting point than magnesium or you can write in a contrast way okay it's yours choice but uh, you must have to explain what's the reason explanation okay next question he says that explain the difference in the melting points of phosphorus and sulfur so keep it in mind that phosphorus always exists as P4 molecular form whereas the sulfur exists as S8 molecular form. Both of the molecules have temporary induced dipole forces of attraction or you can say weak van der Waal forces of attraction. When the van der Waal forces or the type of the intermolecular forces are exactly the same, then we compare their strength depending upon their molecular masses and the electronic clouds. So keeping that explanation in your mind, what you are going to answer, just say due to S8 molecular form sulfur has higher 
melting point then phosphorus in bracket you can show as p4 okay furthermore you can write that there are higher or greater or there are more electronic or electrons there are more electrons in s8 than p4 so then you can easily get two of the marks proceeding towards the next question he says that define electronegativity what is electronegativity simple definition for that you have to say it is the force of attraction it is the force of attraction that is exerted by an atom over the shared pair of electron in a covalent molecule or just in a very short way say it is the force of attraction that is exerted by the electrons to pull them towards the nucleus of the atom so both of them are correct but i'm keeping in mind that mostly we have to explain the electronegativities to define the polarity of the molecules so that scenario the perfect definition could be we can say it is the force of attraction it is the force of attraction exerted by an atom over the shared pair of electrons okay over the shared pair of electron to pull it towards its nucleus that's it or just enough for the one mark then he says explain why electronegativity increases across the period so just keep it in mind the ionization energies or the atomic size you can easily answer this question what you gonna say that as the principal quantum number principal quantum number remains the same remains the same due to which shielding remains the same but effective nuclear charge gradually increases so keep it in mind we are just explaining why the values are increasing we are not going to describe the that the value is increasing or decreasing no we are explaining because examiner clearly mentioned that these values are in increases across the period you just have to give the explanation so keep it in mind this is a descriptive format in mark schemes you may find points bullet points so please try not to write those bullet points as it is try to convert them into meaningful phrases or sentences or in a paragraph form then it will have more acceptance and stronger expression 
I hope you understand. So proceeding. Next part, it says that name the strongest intermolecular force that exists between ammonia molecules. So remember, in ammonia, we have nitrogen, which is a third strong electronegative element which is third strong electronegative element. So keep that in mind. You can easily mention what type of the force is present in that we can say it is hydrogen bond. It is hydrogen bonding or hydrogen bond. Both are correct. Then he says draw a diagram to show the formation of strongest intermolecular force. Mean he is asking about the hydrogen bonding between the two as two is bold so mean in your drawing you must show two ammonia molecules so i am showing like exactly this way here nitrogen that is bonded with three of the hydrogens in the molecule of ammonia and we know that because hydro nitrogen is in the fifth group of the periodic table with total seven electrons so, what we can say the simple electronic configuration reveals it has total 5 electrons in its outermost shell. So, out of those 3 are being shared still there are 2 electrons which are not bonded and are present as a lone pair of electrons. So, in this he clearly mentioned the examiner include any relevant lone pairs of electrons and dipoles. So, first target was the representation of what lone pair the atom with a lone pair of electron is highly electronegative so we have to show the partial negative charge on it and the rest of all the hydrogen atoms have partial positive charge on them so at least show one on the adjacent hydrogen you can show all of them as well but just show as like i'm showing now try to draw another molecule another molecule in such a way either you are going to write like this here I'm showing nitrogen or I'm making little gap so that I can show the bonds again nitrogen that is bonded with hydrogen hydrogen and hydrogen like exactly I copied lone pair of electron with partial negative charge and partial positive charge so the attraction between this lone pair of electron and the hydrogen atom actually this is hydrogen bond this is what hydrogen bond keep it in mind that at a time one of the nitrogen molecule can make only one hydrogen bond at a time is that clear so keep it in mind only one this will help us in any further question if examiner is asking about is that clear so keep it in mind if we found any other molecule for example water in water one molecule of the water h2o is bonded with two of or two another water molecules making two hydrogen bonds at a time so the bonding in water will be stronger as compared to bonding with ammonia keep this mind it will help us to answer the next question I hope you understand. So proceeding with the next question, here he says that this is the last question of the qu same question, last part sorry. The melting points of ice and ammonia are shown. Ice has higher melting point as compared to ammonia. Remember ice is water, don't be confused. Then he says that suggest two reasons for the difference in the melting point of ice and ammonia so we have to explain why ice has higher melting point than ammonia so as i told in the previous part that in water molecule each water molecule has two hydrogen bonds whereas in ammonia there is only one hydrogen bond per or between two of the molecules so this is the reason that is why the bonding in water is stronger okay so what we gonna say that in ice one 
water molecule making two hydrogen bonds due to its hexagonal arrangement hexagonal arrangement this is an extra comment i can show you later okay in by showing the diagram whereas let we finish this here whereas in ammonia each ammonia molecule has only one hydrogen bond one hydrogen bond so this is the reason why ice has higher melting point as compared to so remember why as we shown for the ammonia so no need to repeat that just to check for the water because we know that water exists as v shape molecule and oxygen atom has two lone pair of electron it's partial negatively charged so it will make another bond with the water like this okay so here it has partial positive partial negative and then hydrogen bond is formed here same is the case and it will proceed okay it will proceed and make a hexagonal arrangement i'm just showing these two okay and then one of another water molecule like this partial negative with the lone pair of electrons and here we have hydrogen with partial positive so it will have the attraction over here so you see this one and this one both are hydrogen bonds so as one molecule at a time is making two hydrogen bonds making it more stronger and we need more amount of energy i hope you understand and i try my best to explain each and every part properly so that you can not only understand but have a strong expression while answering these questions so i will try to upload the next question in next video hope you liked it if you have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you we'll see you in the next video